Alrighty, in this video I'm going to be adding 110 outlet to the walls and the ceiling of this bare shop space. Check out my last video where I explained the new space and why I ripped out all the existing wiring. For my current intentions of the space, I actually don't need that many outlets, but if I'm going to even add one, why not add a few? My main question is, how do you run wiring in a metal framed building? From what I understand, the typical way to run wiring in a steel building is to run metal conduit along the bottom side of the girt and fish wiring through it. But I didn't want to go through the learning curve of bending a bunch of conduit, so instead I'm going to run it along the top. Now you can't just run regular Romex along the top because code says it must be protected somehow. So to satisfy that requirement, I'm using something called Flex or MC, which is wiring with a flexible metal jacket coating. Y'all see my cat? She's cute. Okay, with that figured out, next I needed to figure out how to attach the metal junction boxes to the metal girts. By the way, I'm actually told my girts are upside down, so maybe you won't have this problem. But for me to create an attachment method, I simply grab some two by fours from my reuse pile and put them onto the shelf of my girt. I used a few self-tapping screws per board to hold it in place. Now, this will give me something to attach my junction boxes to with wood screws. By the way, if you're shopping for these, I got the ones with a bracket on the bottom. You can also get them without. Each junction box needs a ground screw inserted first. So before attaching any of them, I first went to my pile of reused Romex and cut off some length to create jumpers. The jacket can be stripped off to leave just the copper wire inside. I used the strippers to create a loop and capture the ground screw. Then bent the wire to give myself a little handle, if you will, to thread it in. Next, I attach the boxes in place. My overall plan here is to have two 110s in every 20 foot bay. Next, I needed to create a pathway for the wiring to get from the panel here over to these junction boxes. And that means either going through or around these steel columns. I decided to try through first and put a step bit into a drill and attempted to punch a hole large enough in diameter for the MC to pass through. Look at that. It worked like a champ. Now I can get this MC to this junction box. Next, I needed to break off some of the casing to expose the wires inside to run into my box. I'll go ahead and tell you that this stuff is not easy to break, but it's also not that difficult. By the way, there are several videos showing different methods, but I didn't find any of them to be a golden one. So I stuck with bending the MC where I wanted the jacket cut, then clockwise twisted it to separate it even more. Next, I used some side cutters to cut the bridge of metal to completely cut loose the end. Regardless of what detaching method you go with, the important thing is to not nick the wiring inside. If you ever see exposed copper, then that's what creates a fire hazard. Once I had my first connection in place, next I went to the box side, unwound my length, then measured over to the panel to terminate it there in the same way. From there, it is a lot of rinse and repeat. I repeated the process to daisy between my junction boxes within the same bay to put them on the same circuit. To get power to the other side of the shop, I started a new line from the panel, which will create a new circuit. I want things looking nice and neat, so I found lots of nooks and crannies to sneak the MC through to hide it behind and along the metal framing as much as possible. By the way, if you're gonna be working in corners like this, be sure to check out a three-legged ladder. They just tuck you in close to whatever you're working on. Apparently, these have been around for a while and I'm just now finding out about it. You wanna be careful when pulling this MC because if it gets snagged and you force it, you can separate the twisted metal sleeve it's in. It's important to consider the use of your shop and what your needs will be. This space will be a single person warehouse, so I don't have a ton of power needs. However, if you're planning a woodworking or metalworking shop, check out the wiring video I produced back in 2018 when I built my personal shop. Well, I went down the line to daisy the outlets and do the wiring, Cindy came behind and actually wired in the outlets. 
Okay, and that is the walls done. Now let's move up to the ceiling. Let me pause and thank this video sponsor, which is Ariat. I grew up in their boots. Last year I was introduced to their women's workwear line, and now I have expanded into their casual clothing as well. Whether you're in the market for men's or women's workwear, boots, or casual, Ariat truly does have you covered. They are a company founded on technology and innovation with the goal of making high quality, long lasting attire. Ariat is one of the first companies I know of that created a woman's workwear line that was designed by women. It kind of seems obvious, but as a woman in the trades, I have found it very frustrating that I really only have men items to choose from. So this is really big for women in the industry. It's a small thing, but I love having a pocket I can put my entire hand into. Yes, I love that Ariat not only came out with this dedicated line to women, but they're also expanding on all their other lines and creating brand new ones every time I look. Yes, you can count on that I'm picking up some of those polos for the golf course. If you'd like to check out some area gear, then know that you can save 10% off your first order by using the link down in the description. My plan here is to run flex from the panel, sneak it through the wall, and then work it up to this purlin. From this point, I'll be switching to metal conduit. I'm thinking I'll place a junction box at the center of each bay. You can buy joints of conduit in 10 foot lengths. Since I'm only using it on straightaways, there's no bending involved. To start the process, I installed the first junction box closest to my position. These are very simple to attach with a few self-tapping screws. Remember, with metal boxes, you must have a grommet in the hole, the knockout, to protect the wires from getting damaged. It makes several kinds, but I used a press-in fitting where once you press it in, it can't back out. Then stripped off about eight inches of flex to feed into the box. My approach with this is to do as much work on the ground as possible. So I joined two joints of conduit on the ground and out of the junction box. Then I thought, why would I not fish the wires through right now? What I've seen is people run their conduit and then do all of their fishing, but I'm gonna do it as I go and just see how it works. I was actually getting ready to throw it on the ceiling when I thought, well heck, I could go ahead and wire in the outlet as well. So I even did that on the ground. What this allowed me to do is next, I fed the loose end of the conduit over to my buddy Gary, and he connects it to the stationary junction box. Once that was set, I can attach my box with screws, and then I'm done, which is fabulous. That was too easy. That was way easy. So instead of placing both boxes and cutting the conduit perfectly, you set the one box, leave the conduit as full length, and let it determine where that second box lands. We repeated this formula over and over again, and guys, it works so great. Maybe pros do this already, but I felt really clever because of course, it's so much easier to work on the ground than up in the air above your head. Now, one of the biggest assets on wiring day is having an assortment of ladders. Y'all already met my new best friend, the three-legged ladder, but for ceilings, my new favorite recommendation is the Louisville platform ladder. This one is called the Pinnacle. Do you ever feel like you have crow's feet at the end of the day from being on a ladder, you know, where your foot's curling like this? Well, not with a platform. Not only does this platform create comfort, but it also creates a safer work area. Turning from facing forward to backwards on a step is a no-no, but on a platform, I can 360 turn around. Especially since Louisville has the top curved out so your body has room to rotate. But it doesn't work if you have a belly. <sighs> Suck it in, folks. They also outfitted the top portion with tons of function where you have plenty of room for tools, a paint can, and even a magnetized area for hardware. Then down on the bottom, you have these boots that are non-marring and create a secure slip resistant footing. After the first line was installed, I made a short jump over to the center of the building and placed another box. Then from there, I made another jump to the other side. Know that code does give a limit on how far you can run metal conduit without it being supported. So if your purlins are spaced further apart than this, you'll need to work in some supports. Once those two boxes were installed, we ran two more straightaways the exact same way on the first run. Then, ta-da! Six outlets on the ceiling, ready to go for lights. Now just a tip for you, if you plan to do spray foam insulation, like me, then wait to hang the lights or they're just gonna get messy. I'll be covering insulation in the next video, but for the sake of wrapping up wiring, let's skip ahead and install the lights. I don't know what you think, but to me, lighting is intimidating. There are just so many options. How do you choose? 
Well, I found a company called 1000 Bulbs that have 50 in-house US-based lighting experts to help people like me. When you set up an account, you get an expert assigned to you and access to their online layout tool. That's right, that means you can custom design a plan for your exact space, whether it be a closet or a garage or a warehouse. And their expert help isn't just for contractors. 1000 Bulbs can simplify any lighting job, big or small, as they have an enormous selection of fixtures and bulbs. They even have Christmas lights. The fixtures I'm installing are from PLT Solutions, a brand developed by 1000 Bulbs to combine high quality and extra features with a great price. These fixtures are dimmable, engineered for extreme conditions, and carry a five year no hassle warranty. You can go to 1000bulbs.com to check out their wide variety of fixtures and use their lighting experts on staff to help with your next project. Okay guys, and that wraps up wiring, another major step done. Hopefully you have found some things worth considering if you're gonna be wiring up a space, but I'll also leave you a link down in the description to several other videos on wiring if you're interested. And then of course, stay tuned for the next video in this series where I'm gonna be covering spray foam insulation. I'll see you then.